welcome to the stage Gila Clark Jesus, Peace Ambassador for UNESCO and the panelist for the session that is When Art Calls for Social Change. Please welcome them onto the stage now. Thank you very much, ladies. Gila, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tanya. Welcome to this session when art calls for social justice. Well, you know all that artist has a role, a purpose to raise awareness to something important from the society. When it comes to gender inequalities, when it comes to climate, when it comes to health, well, this is today what we will discover. I have with me, I have the great chance to have five wonderful people who are talking about this notion of art dedicated to social justice. Um, first of all, I would like to welcome Lisa Ambrosio. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for coming. You are an artist, you are an activist, and you are also a photographer. And we will see a little bit of your art in the screen behind. Have a look. Thank you, thank you very much. And welcome. The second person I would like to introduce you to you is Pauline Avenel Lam, Deputy Director of Inclusive Beauty Program at L'Oreal Foundation. Here to have a look on the program Pauline will talk about. Thank you. Third person here together with me is Isabelle Simeoni, who is an author, director, and producer of Adequate. Have a look. What drives you? Uh, Telling stories that change people's minds, telling stories that challenge what people think they know, particularly around black people. So we use our imagination to create a world that doesn't exist, right? So in so many ways, artists and activism, you know, work hand in hand. 
artists are changing society, shaping culture, shifting perceptions. I mean, it's a lot more than playing dress up in front of the camera. And when you think about the black woman and the positions that our black women have been put in on screen, so often adjacent to the main action, so often on the side, so often just walking through, so often only there to prop up or assist the main character. So I have a lot of respect for actors in general, you know, but particularly the black actor and then the black woman actress um, is, uh, you know, queens in our midst too often we, we see that the industries don't embrace in the way that they should. Thank you. Last but not least, the fourth artist I would like to introduce you is Keren Yecheskeli Goldstein, who is a creator and director from the project She's Gone. So in my introduction, I spoke to you about five artists. Who is the fifth? The fifth is you. We are expecting you to grab some action because this is the theme of today's Women's Forum. So please listen and get inspired in order to get active into art yourself. My first question will be this one, ladies. To what extent art in its various form can be a useful way to put forward women's voices? and denounce gender inequalities. And the first person I would like to ask this question is Lisa. Hi, everybody. Um, yes, I think for me, my way to, to exchange uh, the life is in self and after in the global way. For me, it's too important to speak about the power of the imagination and the fantasy, also like a kind of different and a special power, especially in the feminine way. I think we have a kind of intelligence and a kind of sensibility that we can explode. And I explode that in books, in videos, in photographs, in performance, in installations, um, personally, um, I try to speak uh, in, my, in my body work about the male chauvinism. Uh, I come from Mexico and my culture is an expertise in that. Um, for me, it's too important to speak about complicated situations like the necessity to be divorced of a toxic culture. And I think the Mexican culture is really toxic, actually. In that way, uh, I can understand why Mexico is a country with more feminicides around the world. I think it's because the Mexican culture accepts that kind of situations. And also, I try to speak about why the families and the religion is also connected with that kind of issues. Um, also, I can speak about a different kind of feminism in my work. For me, it's too important to give a name to anything that I can explain, like the feminist or feminine chauvinism, anything like that, because I think it exists anything super strange that happened in the Latin American culture in general. A lot of women hate women from the same family. And I think this is a problem of the education. And for me, it's too important to speak about that. 
because it's also another way to restructurate our ideas. And yes, the dreams, the imagination, the creativity, the art can be a kind of therapy and also a kind of way to understand how to make and how to exchange the feminine life, uh, but also the human life. This notion of therapy, we hear, of course, that art is all about catharsis. Pauline, how Urban Shakers is answering these questions regarding gender inequalities? Yes, so this year we launched uh, with the L'Oréal Fund for Women, which is a philanthropic fund that some of you may know, dedicated to support uh, grassroots organizations in their efforts to help vulnerable women. We launched uh, the, the Urban Shakers Challenge, uh, which is a competition basically using art to denounce uh, sexist and sexual violence. And, and we did so because uh, we were convinced that because art uh, moves, uh, alerts, denounces, it is a great uh, vehicle for social change. So basically we did a call for application. Uh, we asked uh, artists to send a piece of urban art in voice, uh, street art, dance, and video creation on the topic of the fight against sexist and sexual violence. We had uh, something like more than 500 applications, and we organized a series of castings in different cities uh, in France. And finally, two weeks ago, uh, we had the final here in Paris in the uh, 104, the Art Center. And seven laureates were awarded with a prize. And maybe more importantly, they became ambassadors of the fight against sexist and sexual violence. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much. Isabel, as a director, you know, how art, and we saw a little bit of your art here, that is more based on documentary more than fiction, how you consider art being something very efficient when it comes to uh, denouncing equalities, gender? Well, hello, everyone. Um, I think as a, um, a, a, as a director, um, a documentary director, um, uh, my focus is always to um, to think about how I can engage a conversation, um, open up, you know, a, a point of view that will have people inside my business, which are the first people I have to convince, and then you know the public that women issues. Um, it, mostly what I, you know, what I focus on myself is um, gender issues and, and um, um, culture um, issues for, um, in, in di for diversity um, uh, population. So mostly my, my, um, my idea is to, to bring the subject matter, the conversation to, um, to, to the people in the industry and to the people in the public and see how we can move um, the barriers a little bit. So it's really step by step. Conversation on one side, no words on the other side, because your work, my dear Karen, is highly symbolic. We saw a little bit about it. Can you tell us a little bit? First of all, I would like to say that I'm so excited and honorable to, to be here, so thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, art for me is a kind of a tool, because first of all, I am an activist. But in order to get uh, into those honorable uh, stages, art for me is a, a way to uh, shout uh, on behalf of the victims, behalf of, behalf of their families, and this is uh, basically what I do. I uh, um, use art in order to spread the message of uh, stop violence against women and domestic violence. So I would like to give a small example. Please. I recently came back from Aruba and we held an event there. And usually when we come to a place and we are going on around 
the word collecting garments of uh, local victims of domestic uh, violence. So we had an event and we collected item. We collected a dress of a woman. Her name is Natasha Koch, and I would like to show her garments, please. This is the dress. It's a dress, it's a real dress of a real woman that she used to be alive, but she's no longer with, uh, with, with, with us, she's gone. So there was a very um, exciting opening there with the prime minister, all the media and so on. But at the end of the evening, I met her son. His name is Rimer, and now he's nine years old. And he told me that the thing that he likes to do the most is uh, to play football with his mother. Unfortunately, when while she was murdered, uh, the children were, was, were in the house as well. Mm. So he told me, please take the dress of my mother and introduce it everywhere you go at every stage, and I would like you to say uh, how much I loved her and how great mother she was. So basically, this is the thing, because art brings me to those places on behalf of those victims and their families, and to stop this phenomenon, the global terrible phenomenon. Thank you. Thank you very much. So those techniques, you have photography, you have dance, you have music, you have movie, you have even fashion, you know, coming on stage in order to express a little bit more than reality, truth. This is what art is doing. And my second question will be, how can the artistic field be more inclusive and empower women artists to gain visibility and express themselves? Pauline, what would you answer to this question? Well, inclusion was really uh, at the core of the Urban Shakers Challenge when we started to design it. And this is why, actually, we chose urban arts, because it was, for us, inclusive and even wider than just gender diversity. And uh, we did so because we wanted to allow anyone, anywhere, to be able to tackle this fight against sexist and sexual violence. And because it's everyone's issue, and not just uh, the fight uh, or a topic of interest of an elite, um, and also because it was a way, when we talk about inclusion, to also include and to target a younger audience with urban art, uh, which is probably a bit more inclined to uh, social commitment, social change. So social, really we hear this importance of inclusion. And Keren, what would you answer to this question of inclusion? How can art help? We saw that you're doing this wonderful this wonderful work, and it's not only a question of getting garments, it's to exhibit them, it's to show them. And there is this for all form of art, how art could be more inclusive in terms of a woman's point of view. I think that first of all, uh, the main issue with women artists is the funding. Mm. Because I need, I think that uh, in order to push your, pr your uh, project forward, you need uh, money and unfortunately um, investing in art is not uh, considered to be as an efficient uh, tool to make a social change. But from my experience, I, 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 uh, I um, experienced this journey almost for, for six years. So I met hundreds of people and I heard hundreds of stories, but I will choose one. It's a, a story of a young woman, she's around uh, 20, and she met me. And she said, I experienced your installation something like two years ago, and it shocked me. And I came back home and I uh, ended a relationship with my boyfriend. He was violent to me because I thought that if I would not go immediately, I would be the next one in your installation. 
and you might have to put my garments as well. So she decided to join the police in order to gain a confident and control back to her life. So art is changing. Art is really changing. It can uh, also, in this example, maybe it can also save life. Isabel, I see you nodding. Do you agree on this notion of economy oh, that yeah. needs to be linked to women? Absolutely. Power? And uh, I will also add to that that, um, of course, you know, finance and budgeting um, um, for film is a is a is a big. It's a fight every time, but even more um, in terms of um, uh, social, you know, changing the, um, the the social status um, for for us. We realized with Aisa Maiga when we were um, doing this um, this documentary, Melanin, is that we need game changers in boardrooms and um, people who have the experience, who have um, a notion at least of um, the, um, um, the, 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 the length of uh, work that we have to do for um, women, um, gender issues, to um, to be uh, to, to to be out of the invisibility. So, for that matter, m you know, financing is a, 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 a important, not only important. It's 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 the issue to begin with. So, you have to have um, people from um, diversity who are you know, who have um, um, been studying, who can get an open door, who can get in a position so they know the storytelling we're giving them is important because it will, you know, sh shake the status quo. So yes, absolutely, to, to, to me, um, it's, it is uh, what they say in France, le nerf de la guerre, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so. Yes. Um, you speak about game changers and what is a game changer if it's not in photography, this notion of revelation? Lisa, what is for you the game changer for women's visibility in art? I think so is be honest, be honest with yourself, be honest with the reality, your reality and the others. But I think the most important, like an artist, is to be the reflect of the male way to see or to be. Um, I think also in, I work like in series all the time, uh, like a serial killer, but <laughs> yes, like a serial artist. And in, in my, light, my last project, I spoke about the culture of the feminicide and why it's important to pronounce that word. Because in the Mexican culture, in I think in around cultures around the world, the people don't pronounce the word feminicide. And it's important to have a kind of letter of love and responsibility with another woman around the world that was killed or was assassinated because are women, only women, no, not for another reason. But I think so. This is the best way to be to be really connected in the political way, in the creative way, but also in our historical way. Because we are here, and that girls are dead, and it's so sad because we we don't are more intelligent, more beautiful, or more whatever we have the chance to be here and we need to speak. Speak is important, be smart, and also um, reproduce her voices in different ways, in the visual way, uh, in the music, uh, in a performance, in all the possibilities. Thank you, thank you very much. And so we hear that it's all about communication. And 
in the audience, I'm sure we wonder, okay, well, what about this plus that would create art from an object or from a movie? And this would be my next question uh, to Isabel. How do you use your art to convey a powerful message? What is this little plus that you will add to reality to get to the truth of social change? Well, I would say uh, it's, um, it's a way of, um, I start with challenging myself and, um, you know, writing a, a, um, a film before you direct a film is a lot of, um, uh, it's a long creative process, it's a, it's a lot of investigation. And, and uh, what I always try to do is to get um, the information I get as a, um, an educa um, educational tool, um, challenge myself with it and not see, sometimes I, I you know, I, I interview people or I, I read information and it challenges me um, in my, um, in my, my, my concept, my behaviors, you know, and I always try to say to myself, this information, it's an edu educational tool, so that I, and not a criticism against my, um, you know, my beliefs and my, my, my biased behavior. So, you know, this is, this is how I, I go on on my creative um, process. And, and then, you know, um, I always also remember something um, my mother told me when I was growing up, if you know how to read, you know how to do anything in the world. So, yeah, that's, that's also something that I keep very much in mind. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, going to Keren, um, showing garments is one thing. To make it artistic, it means that you have a certain artistic angle in your installation. Yeah. Can you let us know what is your vision as an artist of this installation? What type of artistic angle in order for us to be completely moved in our heart? Yes, it's a very good question. <laughs> um, first of all, I must say that uh, uh, putting a personal story inside of an art uh, exhibition uh, turns somehow into a political and social issue. And what I suggest in my exhibition is an experience for people who are coming. I suggest them to put away what they know about domestic violence and to feel, to touch the garment, to smell, to look, to be present in the um, experience. Um, once I uh, invited a group of blind people, mm. so they came in and they touched very gently the garments. They told me, I cannot see anything, but I really can imagine who was she uh, and how old. And so basically this is an experience and I think that art can touch your heart, it bypass your logic, it bypass your thinking, and you just feel you're being present. And we all know that it is quite difficult to have people's attention these days. We are so busy in our mind. So at the end, when you touch their heart, I think it's the right moment for those uh, seeds to be planted, to grow, and somehow to motivate people to take meaningful and real action in their life. Thank you. So you would say stop thinking ahead. First feel with your five senses. Be here, get an availability, a mental availability, be present, and then discover this art that will lead to social change. Lisa, is this how you want the spectator to observe what you show, um, because we see the treatment of the image, we saw the colors, we saw things that are just jumping on our eyes. How do you work to get to this level of aesthetic? With experience. I think the experience is the best way to, to connect. 
to reconnect also with another people from different cultures, from different age, from different realities. When I spoke about uh, um, violence, I must talk about also the culture of the incest and the violence inside to the families. No, not this outside. I think it's, it's, it's anything that is so strong. I mama spoke also about the religious problem in, in a culture like the super Catholic Mexican culture. Uh, I must spoke about also, yes, the feminist side because I was a journalist when I was more younger, was my first job at 70 years old. Uh, I made that all the days and I see decapitated people for two years. I made uh, photographs uh, at the moment when the narco traffic start in a really, really bad way in Mexico. Uh, and I think for me it's too important explore, exploring that situation and when you have that kind of experience, also you can be also super dark, but also super sweet. At the same time, this is the difference between a person that never feel that kind of horrible situation like that. Like that. Uh, when you feel that, and you can see a kind of light, a kind of colors, a kind of future, you can also give to another people the possibility to project herself and to see opportunities in the chaos, in the history of the chaos. And this is not only my chaos, it's the global chaos. Thank you. Well, I attended uh, the Urban Shaker competition. I was blown away by the level of energy. And this is what is art too energy, vibrations, and strength coming from the artist. Is this uh, something that uh, you are saying to the spectator, just watch, be present, feel, and then think, because social change will be embodied in yourself? Yes, exactly. Urban Shakers, I think it's a great example on how art can really bring social change, because on one hand, you have these artists, that you ask to think, to tackle the subject of sexist and sexual violence. And on the other hand, you have the public, you raise awareness, uh, you increase visibility, and you make people think, oh, when watching this video, when he hearing this song, they think of the topic as well. So it definitely uh, creates dynamics of change, but also creates bridges because it says that of course, anyone can be a victim, but anyone can also uh, is able to fight against it. Ladies, this is already almost the end of our panel. Thank you so much for all your beautiful says and recommendations. Maybe one last and very short uh, key recommendation for our audience to get this fifth artist that they need to be and to act differently. Please, maybe one last recommendation, and let's begin with... Pauline. I, I believe when, we, when it comes to uh, gender inequalities, we usually think of women. It's normal. Uh, but to me, uh, social change must be inclusive and collective. So we should include men as well because change will go through them. Uh, they are a key part of the solution. And this is why for the Urban Shakers Challenge, we integrated them. It was not only for women. And we had men think, write, dance, uh, sing uh, on the topic of uh, sexist and sexual violence. And it was, I think, the, the beginning of the social change we wanted to initiate with such an initiative. Yes, masculine positivity, as the Dr. Mukwege is saying. Alisa, what would be your key recommendation? I think is give you the opportunity to be freedom, to choose your freedom. And the art is also another way to be free, to be honest, and to meet yourself. Uh, I think this is my, my general recommendation, and support the artist, both art, construct uh, another ways to reconnect the creative people, because we are also revolutionary voices, uh, but 
maybe too critic, critics in some ways, and, and it's important also to listen to another kind of intelligence, the creativity, the imagination, and the culture. Thank you. What does say the director, Isabel? Well, the director usually, you know, asks the question, so <laughs> it's, it's an easier position. But I would say, for me, it's always, um, you know, keep on being curious. Keep on, keep on challenging um, your beliefs and um, try to, um, um, to, f to find the energy to convince you know, the, 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 the people who will give you the opportunity to make your film. So being, um, you know, sports, being um, inclusivity, being um, a portrait of an artist and, uh, you know, looking at it from a, a very um, uh, um, womanly, I would say, you know, um, perspective so that, um, I will always try to to add content, you know, gender content, to the way I want to propose um, my perspective on on the, the film I want to make. So, yeah. thank you. Well, Karen, you will have the final say, my dear. I'm honored. <laughs> uh, well, domestic uh, violence is the most uh, silenced transparent and dangerous epidemic at the world today, in my opinion. And it is not enough to, wear awareness, to raise awareness, and it is not, not enough to um, challenge the discourse. I will give you some numbers, if it's possible. One of three women is being um, physically, um, physically hurt or uh, uh, went through violence in the world. 60,000 people are being murdered only because there were women around the globe every year. So these are the numbers. And I think that in this honorable uh, stage, I can recommend that each one of us will take responsibility and take action. Um, around his um, neighborhood or, or, or her organization, uh, family, neighborhood, whatever. And I think we should make sure that every woman is aware of the signs of a toxic, dangerous relationship. And every woman should know that help is valuable. And um, this is the way for all of us to be focused on this mission and maybe we can break the walls of uh, shame and uh, guilt and fear. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you, dear audience, for this active listening. And please remember, you don't need to be artists to use art to transmit social change. Action is up to you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your very inspiring panel with action. Thank you so much. Thank you.